In this video, I want to show you how you can create your own reusable global calendar for your reports using data flows. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So a while back, I created a video covering how you can create your own calendar tables for your reports. And there were lots of reasons that you should do it. And it's one of the best practices that I encourage everyone to do uh, when it comes to dealing with time intelligence. And in this video, I showed you how you can create your own calendar reports using DAX and Power Query. However, as you start creating more and more reports over time, you'll find that you'll have to start recreating these calendar tables again and again. So in this video, I want to show you how you can use the same solution and move it to the next level by creating a global calendar table that you can reuse again and again with your future reports. So for this solution, we're going to utilize data flows, which is going to be a separate entity from your reports. And it will be the single place where your reports can pull the calendar table from as and when it's needed. So the first thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to create the calendar table uh, in our Power BI desktop and then move it to data flows, just because it's a lot easier for us to work with the uh, Power Query in desktop, especially with the IntelliSense for the M query. And luckily for us, because we've already covered it in a separate video, uh, we can just reuse the same uh, code that I have created here in the video. So if I just open this M code here, we can just copy this, open a new Power BI desktop uh, file, hit transform, and we'll just create a new blank query. We'll hit advanced editor, and then we'll just paste this code that we've uh, created, uh, we've copied from that video. We'll hit done. You'll see that it's generated as a set of dates uh, from 2000 to whatever the end date that we've specified. So if I just go back to the advanced editor, a couple of things to just have a look at uh, is these two lines. These are what defines the range of the dates that we have here in Power Query. So the dates range from the 1st of January 2000 to the end of uh, December of 2020. So we just want to make a small change in this query to make sure that the start dates and end dates are both dynamic based on the current day to day. So maybe we want to keep reusing these calendars in the future. And at the moment we are now in 2021. So we'll need to make sure that the range of the dates here are sort of dynamic based on the current dates. And to do that, we'll need to use, um, modify this a little bit. So we'll do um, date time dot local now. Uh, this returns the current date, uh, the date time currently at the moment. So when you refresh the data flow, it will give you the current date time. Now the start date and end date parameters take a date uh, value. So we're gonna make sure we wrap this around uh, something called a date time dot date. So this converts a date time value to a date. And lastly, what we will need to do is we'll need to make the start date um, a couple of years before the current date. So we'll uh, say date the add years, and then we'll say, I want you your start date to always be three years before the current date. So that's exactly what this code says. And that's it. So that makes sure that uh, your start date is always three years before. Uh, but obviously you can change that as you want. And uh, that's just what I prefer at the moment. You can add more than three years there, obviously. And we'll copy the same thing here on the end date. And we'll just say, um, give me uh, three years in the future as well. So now you have that, we'll hit done. So now you have a range that goes all the way, uh, should be to 2024, right? So if I just sort that to descending, just to show you, here we go. 
So it goes all the way up to three years in the future. Now, because this is a calendar table, we need to make sure that we add some extra columns that we want to use as uh, our time intelligence slicers. So the columns like year, month, day, things like this. Now we can write some more M queries in multiple steps for this, but uh, the easiest way for you to do this without using any code is actually going here and selecting column from examples. So you add a new column here and it will use the date uh, column that we've created here as a sample. So if I just start typing 2018, you'll see a couple of things here that uh, it will auto generate based on suggestions that you've done. So it's um, kind of inferring that you want to get the year from this date column. So we just select the one that we want. We hit enter and now if you hit OK, you'll see that it's created its own um, step for us. We didn't have to worry about how the M query has done it. It's just done it for us automatically. So let's do the same thing for the month and the day. So again, column from examples. And this one we want to say 08. And we want to say it should be what we want is the month. 08 yeah so you'll see the other ones obviously it's 9th that's september uh, and probably we'll just rename this to month and then we hit okay and then another one column from examples we want to now put the day so 15 day from date hit enter Here we go uh, maybe we want to add the month name instead of the month number. So we'll do the same thing. Uh, and then we'll say here, we want August. So again, you see, I'm not writing any code here. I'm just suggesting uh, what I want to get from these columns. And then it just sort of autofills for me what M query um, it needs to do it. So I hit OK. Again, we have the month name. And maybe we want to add uh, another custom one, but you can add as many as you want. We'll just add this last one, which is, uh, let's say the year and the month. So 2018 and August. And maybe it's better to be like this, 2018.8. So you see, um, it doesn't matter what sort of uh, formatting I choose, as long as the data is there, it, it just follows that across um uh, all of those columns so we'll just name this one year month Hit okay and then that's it for now so we have uh, a calendar table that we've generated uh, using this script that we copied from that previous video so now that we've finished our calendar table in our power bi desktop it's now time to move this into uh, data flows so before we move on from here we're gonna go to advanced editor we are going to copy this script. So this is the script that drives the transformations that we've done here. We're going to go to our um, workspace here. There's an empty workspace sample reports. And from the workspace, you can hit new data flows. And from here, add new tables. And for here, we're going to click blank query because we have our script that we've just copied. So we're gonna paste it there. So hit next. You should see the same results that we have in Power BI now in the data flow. So um, as you, you will notice, it looks exactly the same as Power Query. You can just treat data flows as essentially Power Query online. Uh, the only reason that we didn't do it here is that the IntelliSense, uh, the kind of pop-up tooltips when we are doing our transformation, uh, isn't available here, or at least not as robust as in Power BI Desktop. So we just did it there and copied the results here. So we'll name this one calendar. And that's it. So we'll hit save and close. We'll name this one calendar as well uh, and well let's refresh it 
and that's it. So now you've created a calendar table in Dataflows that you can reuse for your other reports. So let me show you how it works in action. So I'm gonna create a new blank report here. We're just gonna use the same one because it's uh, it's empty anyway. So there is no data in here. So let's say we bring in our data, we have our sales table that we want to use, and then we want to do time intelligence. Now, instead of recreating your calendar tables from scratch, all you need to do is get data from Power BI data flows. Now, you ha if you have access to that same workspace, you should have access to the data flow itself. So here you can import the calendar table the same way that you would import other sources from different systems. So you just hit now uh, load data. And there you go. So you now have a calendar table in your Power BI report. If you look at the data view here. You have the, the dates that we've generated in data flow. And if you look at the Power Query here, you didn't do you didn't have to do anything at all. You just have to import the calendar table and it's all handled for you. And that's really it for this video. I hope it helped you understand how easy it is to start creating uh, reusable components like a calendar table with your Power BI reports. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really enjoyed this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.